escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hello and welcome to another episode of Screw the Cubicle TV. I am so glad you're here. And I'm also so very excited to share uh, this week's video, which is gonna be a special episode where I have a guest on the show. Uh, and her name is LaVista Jones. I'll tell you more about it in the next jump of the video. Uh, but what the topic we're going to be covering today, which I think is an important message uh, for new and budding entre entrepreneurs, as well as entrepreneurs that have already had a business, uh, and how we sort of measure or have healthier metrics of success in our business, but how do we incorporate more pleasure and joy and ease in the way that we conduct ourselves in our business so that we're not uh, just working to the bone in order to feel successful or gain success uh, in business, and how do we readjust some of the things that we need to do to allow ourselves as an asset of the company uh, to be healthy. Now, this is something that is an important topic for me, especially because last year uh, I was sort of making the most money in my business uh, and even the year before. But how it got, uh, how what it took me to get there um, absolutely made me burnt out. And I even had like three months of severe depression at the end of last year. And so my own readjustment of my own metric of success had to really be looked at. And I think what La Vista is going to share in this interview today is really some really simple steps. You can incorporate it uh, a new version of self-care that has nothing to do with bubble baths and champagne <laughs> in your life and a lot to do with healthier boundaries and what you allow your time and efforts to be focused on in your business that's either going to bring you pleasure or displeasure, right? We want to bring absolutely more joy into the way you run it. So um, I hope you enjoy this conversation and let me know if there's anything that resonates with you in this interview. We would love to share with the community um, what people are doing, what they're taking, what initiatives they're taking on uh, to allow more balance and allow more um, less of the hustle mentality, you know, in their business. And I think it's a big message for us to share uh, so that we can just have a lot more sustainability right? Uh, in business so that people aren't feeling burnt out and having to go through any depression like I did last year as well. I hope you enjoy the show. In today's interview, I have LaVista Jones with me, whose un unique magic is helping business owners bring order to the chaos of life and business. So she's an author, she's a speaker and community builder, and she's leading a movement of business owners who want more life than frazzled days and sleepless nights. So we're going to talk a lot about LaVista's creative approach to business analysis and implementation that saves your clients valuable time so that you too can discover a better way to run your business, get back to making yourself and what you love a priority. Thank you so much for joining me, LaVista. Thank you for having me, Lydia. I love being here. Thank you. Well, when I met you, what was it? It's almost like a little over a year ago in Phoenix, because I was doing my all day sort of intensive coaching uh, day with Pam Slim, which is sort of who we met. And Pam is our sort of like that mama bear. <laughs> that we're, we're part of the family. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. And so you were part of my day. So you got to see like all the ins and outs of my business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you were there taking all the notes and helping me sort of like, while well, you were holding space really for both of us, Pam and I, to really plan my year, plan my initiatives. And I think meeting you and sort of getting to know you on a personal level as well in my couple of days in, in Phoenix, uh, we reconnected, right, on Facebook and on social media. And then when you started to share a lot of what your focus of work is these days, right, which is not only on like the systems and operations of a business, but really like taking care of the person behind yeah. the business, I was like, okay, I got to get LaVista on the show because we talk a lot of things about technical things and strategies and all the you know kind of cool stuff about work but then if that person behind doing that work isn't feeling ease and joy and pleasure what's it all for right exactly exactly yeah so I know a lot of people that are going to be listening today are sort of new and budding entrepreneurs and they're possibly also people that have started businesses, but maybe down the line somewhere, like things just kind of got a little out of hand <laughs> when yeah. it comes to maintaining like balance and even incorporating a bit of joy in the way that they do their work. So 
before we sort of get into the nitty gritty of sort of your specialty of focus and, and how that can help us business owners have more ease in our work, I want to kind of know a bit more about your story and for people listening to know a little bit more about you. So uh, can you start by kind of telling us like, how did you get started in doing the work that you're doing today? And then tell us the story of like, what led you to make this work meaningful for you? Yeah, so you know, I started my business back in 2005, um, and it, it looked quite different then than it does now. Um, and I took a bit of a hiatus. I, I went back into corporate life um, in 2008, and um, what was supposed to be like a four month contract ended into seven years <laughs> of me wow. being there. Um, and it really kind of it was like really great training because it helped me with. Um, to hone in on like the strategy part of the business um, that I do like with business owners, helping them to really look at like their operations um, in a very strategic way to streamline things, identify gaps. But the, um, the motivator for what I do now, kind of marrying self-care with your systems for your business really happened because I experienced burnout in that corporate position. Mm. And not because it was a job that like, oh my God, like I hate it, like quite the opposite. I loved my job. Like I loved everything about it. Like, um, I think that if there was a corporate position that could have like been perfectly made for somebody, this was made for me. But one of the things looking back at it now, like hindsight, I realized that I had really shitty boundaries like with my time at that job and over time like the pace that I was pushing myself at it wasn't sustainable and eventually my body it was just like yep nope like we're not doing this anymore mm -hmm. and so it was like little things that you know my body was trying to tell me like hey I need rest and I need you to take care of me it was like we can keep going like I've got ambition and I need to like hustle and like do this and I was climbing the corporate ladder and I was doing really well for myself but like I was saying I was not doing it at a pace that was sustainable or healthy for myself so you know it kind of started off where I was just like really tired and it's like I couldn't understand like why I was so tired um, and then it kind of progressed to like me having like these headaches that really wouldn't go away but like I wasn't really focused it was like oh like I'll take some Tylenol and like keep moving right I got reports to do I got this I got that to do and then it got to be where I would get feedback from my boss um, and it's feedback you know like things that we had discussed several times before, looking at like a, a presentation deck or anything like that, nothing malicious that he would say, but I would get off the phone with him and start crying. Oh, and I would yeah. be sitting there like, why are you crying? Like, You're like you on edge all the time, yes. right? I know that feeling. Like, I don't that. understand like what's happening with me. And then, um, you know, I was just feeling like a certain kind of way, like I, like something's not right. And then it started to, like, I would start negotiating with my husband, like, before I would walk out the door, like, hey, um, if you don't make me go to work today, <laughs> like, I will do X, Y, and Z, like, I will do anything under the sun to not have to go to work today, because mm -hmm. something about being there just seemed completely unbearable. Mm -hmm. And then I remember distinctly, I was driving into the office, and, you know, I found, like, my palms were starting to sweat, I'm I'm in the car crying my heart is racing and I'm like oh I'm having a panic attack on the 202 driving into the office and I'm like okay so I finally got to the office and got myself together enough to go into my um, into my building and the first call I made was to my husband and was like so I'm coming home <laughs> I was like because something's not right and the second call I made was I went and found and made an appointment with a psychologist. I was like, because something, something's not right. And then, you know, talking to her, it was like, I realized like I had just let things go on so long that it was just like, I had hit the wall and like burnout was what I was in. Mm -hmm. um, and so it resulted in like me taking six weeks of like short-term disability just to try to help me wow. get my life 
together to like let go of the stress to rest to get the sleep that I had didn't really been depriving myself for such a long time um, and then it, it ended really with me actually resigning from this job that I loved to then go back into doing you know this thing on my own but mm. that's why the self-care piece is so important with each of the clients that I work with because one of the things that I always tell them it's like you know you can't really fully fulfill the vision of your business if you're forsaking the visionary you know yeah. if you are constantly like on edge and tired and exhausted and you know I think especially like in a startup phase there, there's a place for like maybe being part of team no sleep for a time because you've got to get stuff done especially if it's just you but that shouldn't be your everyday norm of you know, working until three right. o'clock in the morning and then getting up at five and not taking a break to have lunch or not doing any of those kind of things, like it, that's not sustainable. Like, mm. and you, and if you set yourself up that way, you eventually are going to get to a place where like this business that you have poured your sweat, your heart, you know, all of your energy, your resources into, and you're going to like resent this thing that you have built. And it's like, F this business, I'm going back to the office and, right. you know, if I'm going to be unhappy, I might as well let somebody else pay me and give me benefits. Totally. And I think yeah. it's so important, like uh, what a good point that you make that like, especially at the beginning part of your business, like a lot of people think, you know what, I'll just like do the self-care thing and have more balance when my business is su successful. Like I'm not allowed to have that just yet, but I think you made a really good point that you're almost like setting the tone for what your entire business will look like and feel like right. from the get-go, right? right? Which I think is, is an, an important message here to start with because I think especially in the beginning of time when actually when you're not bombarded by a bunch of customers just yet where you, know, you can actually start in a good foot, it's really good to sort of set that, that tone right for you, right? To sort of go, here's when I have some space and time to actually really think about how I want to design my business, right? In a way that serves me, not only just my customers, but serves me as a business owner, then you're really designing something that's intentional, right? Rather than allowing like the outside world to dictate how it is that you should run your business. Exactly, yes. <laughs> So like, how did you, so when you started, so you, 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 as you said, you left your job, you took a six week sort of like, wet, like leave of absence. And then you decided to quit your job. By the way, your burnout story is so similar to mine, except mm -hmm. my, mine happened in, mine happened in Moscow, <laughs> in Russia. I had a full on panic attack in my hotel room in winter of 2012. Mm -hmm. I developed short term agoraphobia. I could not leave the hotel room for my appointments for my corporate job. Mm -hmm. And I too had to come home early and hire a therapist therapist because it's what you do when you think you've lost your shit <laughs> and then right the, the reality of like what it is that's been causing you or the feeling of that panic attack or anxiety or burnout has been self self inflicted but also the way that you're you know conducting your life and your work is sort of the outcome this is what it is until your body yeah. decides to go enough is enough I don't care who, yeah. what kind of high achiever you are this we're gonna just put you down <laughs> for a minute <laughs> right so yeah. So when you so when you quit your job and then decided to be sort of self-employed and carve your own path as a, as an entrepreneur, how did you um, first of all decide on the types of businesses that you want to work with, and what problems that you wanted to solve in the work that you were called to do? Yeah. So when I went back um, in 2014 to to relaunch the business and, and go back on my own, um, I knew that I wanted. Um, to work with solopreneurs, um, and I specifically focus on women, um, though I, I have had some, some male clients, um, but I, I really like focusing on women solopreneurs because we as women tend to, to wear like all of these hats, no matter really like what you've got going on, you know, you are usually, you're somebody's daughter, you might be somebody's wife, you might be somebody's mother, you've got this business, you might be doing something in ministry or something in your community, like you're always wearing all these hats, taking on all these roles. And if business owner is one of those roles, and it's just you, you're also the marketer, you're the salesperson, you're the person that's bringing in the money, you know, you're wearing all the hats in the business as well as juggling all of the other stuff. And what I find is that those are the women that are like so
so overwhelmed with like the stuff that they've got going on that they are the ones that like need my help the most to help them streamline, to save like their time in doing this and to really focus on taking care of themselves because they are, you know, giving out, you know, in so many other places. So mm -hmm. that just kind of like, yeah, these are my people. Like I understand these people. I am yeah. these people. <laughs> that yeah, is me. Best, you know, I'm your a best wife. customer I'm a is mom. like yourself, right? Of, like of you very, Yes, yes, you know, um, yeah, yeah, so it's just like, yeah, I, I get, I get what you're going through, because I live it every day, um, and I think that because of, you know, my, my experience with corporate, especially with the burnout, I understand that if you don't put some safeguards in place, you're really setting yourself up for, like, a big downfall that I don't want anybody else to ever you know go through like even your story um you know with you being a mom like i don't want anybody to go through that like it was terrible for me like i hated it <laughs> it was like yeah. how did i get here and then you know looking back it's like oh i see how i got there yeah and i don't i don't want anybody else to take that same journey yeah, it's almost like standing. I mean, I think we have like a, a similar mission in the sense it's like we, we want to advocate like a new version of success for people where people don't have to feel like in order to get to, you know, making money and being a successful business owner and living the life, you know, of an, of an entrepreneur needs you to sacrifice that much to get there. And I think in the, I don't know about you, but I, my newsfeed is bombarded with the hustle mentality, right? It's all about working harder, doing more things, offering more things, marketing in 50 different platforms until, you know, you want to just kill yourself, <laughs> you know, and, and doing more to, to have more, right? Rather yeah. than less in something more, more intentionally and, and more meaningfully and, and having more in that regard. So I want to talk a little bit about this, this sort of culture of busyness, because I think as entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. we are, as I said, bombarded with that kind of message where we have to be doing things all the time and feeling busy to feel productive and to feel like we're a bit of a success. And, and I think when we compare ourselves, especially as new business owners, when we take a look at other businesses out there, it can, it can be very easy to um, fall into the trap of like comparing ourselves to that kind of business and doing all the like busy activities that another business could look like they're doing, except that they maybe have a team <laughs> and they've got a completely different kind of model of business. Now you spoke to me a little bit about the issue with business owners wearing this act of busyness as a badge of honor, right? right so yeah. what are some of the problems that you saw, right? As you've been working with people in how people were managing their business or what they think they had to do to get to success? Yeah, I, you know, I think that you like hit the nail on the head, right? When you were talking about like the comparison chat, because yeah, we, we do, I think, wear busyness as like a badge like you you ask somebody like oh how are you and the first thing you say like I'm so busy <laughs> I'm so busy because you know I've got so much stuff going on it's just like okay like I mean that that's not what I'm really asking about I'm asked like how are you like as a person kind of thing um and and I think that it does you know uh really feed into that comparison trap and um we talk a lot about this like in my monthly um boss talk sessions that I have where it's just like you sitting in your office, you might see somebody on social media and it's like, oh, they got like this speaking gig or they had this book launch or like they've got this going on or that going on. And you're looking at like the highlight reel of everything that they have going on. And like you said, you don't know that if they have a team or not that's helping them do these things. Like they might have a VA that's doing this. They might have a publicist. They may have like, you know, uh, a small army that is like helping them do all this stuff, but it looks like it's just them doing it. And then totally. you also don't see all of the crap that they're dealing with on the back end, like, okay, she got the speaking gig, but she's not publicly telling you about the 20 rejections that she got before she got this. You're just seeing this. Or, okay, you're seeing that she launched a book, but you're also not seeing the full story that it, maybe it took her 10 years to write that book, or that maybe she got X amount of rejections from a publisher before that book actually got picked up by somebody um, and is now out here in the marketplace. So, you know, not seeing and understanding like the full picture of like what's going on with entrepreneurs, we're just seeing like, okay, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're like on their grind and they're doing 
doing that. So it means like I've got to like do it 10 times more so yeah. that I can be, you know, as successful as they appear as well. And, you know, like that comparison trap, like it, it's a trap, like it's called a trap for a reason, because like if you fall into it, it's just like, it's a spiral that, you know, it's really hard to kind of get yourself out of, you know, instead of like looking at like, what are my actual goals? How do I define success? And like, you know, what are the things that would need to be done for me to feel good about where I am in my business? It's like, hey, if you see someone else doing X, Y, and Z, it's like, I celebrate you. That's great. I have no idea like the full story, what went behind you doing that, but I'm sure that there's a story there, but congratulations. And then I'm going to keep doing the thing <laughs> that, that I'm doing to get towards the goal that, that I'm working for. Absolutely. Now, before yeah. I, want to, I want to ask you a little bit, and, and we'll do this after this other question, because because before we dive into, like, I, I'm curious to learn the process that you would take. Like, if you had a customer in front of you, you're working with a business owner. Like, what are some of the key steps that you commonly, you know, would facilitate that journey on with, right, with these customer, uh, these business owners, in order yeah. for you to help them a define their version of success and then mm -hmm. adjust their metrics accordingly. To their goals, right? Rather than um, letting them see what's externally and sort of being that being in that comparison trap. Now, before we go into the process, I, I know that self care, as you've mentioned, is an important piece of you bringing that healthy feeling to people's businesses. But the term self care is such a thing that's used in all sorts of ways these days. Like you go on Instagram and if you view type in the hashtag self-care, you get everything from, you know, bubble baths to taking a hot shower to, you know, any sort of like, sometimes even like a bit of like a woo-woo approach of self-care. So wh why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you mean by self-care and what are some sort of things that business owners can consider as self-care that's actually going to be helpful to the bottom line of their business? Yeah. So at the core definition of self-care, um, I believe it's anything that brings you joy and happiness. And I look at self-care through the lens of um, like the five length love languages, like the research that was done by Dr. Gary Chapman. Um, and typically we, we, we look at like those love languages through the conversation of my significant other that I have a relationship with. Like I need to know how to speak their love language but the thing is, we're wired in a certain way to like give and to receive love. And that conversation, you know, should also reside with us. Like, how do I receive love? And I shouldn't have to wait for somebody else to do those things for me. I can do them myself. And so that seems to be like this, like, aha moment when I have those conversations with clients like I've never thought about trying to implement like my love languages to myself and I'm like I know right. what a novel idea for you <laughs> to <laughs> think about how am I wired to receive love in doing those things um and I think that there are some some misconceptions right like about like self-care that I also try to to go over with clients and you know you kind of hit on them like sometimes um I think we're in that mindset of like self-care has to be like this full day, $800 spa appointment, you know, and not that there's anything wrong. With, like, I love going to the spa, but that at its core is, is not self-care. Cause like, if you're a person who doesn't like being touched, me telling you, you have to go get a massage. Like that's not going to do it for you. So like, you know, I, I usually, um, from a self-care standpoint, like help them, um, kind of navigate through like the excuses that they're, they're dealing with with self-care. So, you know, I don't have the time. Well, there's a lot of things that you can do and that maybe you probably are doing that you're not even like recognizing as self-care that you can actually think about differently and celebrate like, Oh, like I did like, this is me taking care of myself and you're changing the mindset of how you're looking at those things. Um, and then a second thing is like self care is not this thing to add to your to do list. Like, okay. Like I sent out my newsletter. I got some mailers out. I did this podcast. I did self care. Self care really, I think done right should be infused into like everything that you do. Mm -hmm. um, into like your day-to-day -day activities in your life, in your business, so that the things that you are doing on a regular basis are constantly charging your battery instead of like doing things that are depleting you. 
And if you look at your self care like that and not like this next thing, like I've got to check off, it seems a lot less overwhelming and a lot less daunting. And it's like, oh, okay, like I'm taking care of myself. And it's not because like it was an appointment on my calendar kind of a thing. Or, you know, one of the other excuses is, oh, you know, it's so expensive. Well, Again, you know, it, it doesn't have to be like this $800 spa visit. You know, there are a lot of things you can do absolutely for free. Like, you know, taking um, time to, I don't know, like drink some water. <laughs> like, yeah. that, that's not an expensive thing for you to do, um, but it, it's good way to take care of yourself. Um, and um, like one of the other ones is like, I just don't even know what to do. And I, I think that I find that a lot with like the women that I work with again, because they're like wearing all these hats. And the way that I kind of describe it is like, it, it makes sense um, in the sense that as we get older and we develop like these other significant relationships and maybe we take on these careers that are demanding or maybe that we have like these families or we start these businesses, we start losing little pieces of, our, of ourselves mm. over time because we're dedicating time to spend time with like my spouse and do the things that they like to do. Or I'm dedicating time to spend time with my kids and doing the things that they like to do. And then, you know, you forget, like, you know, somebody asks you the question, it's like, hey, what do you like to do? And it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, that's probably a problem. So, you know, yeah. helping them um, reconnect with the things like maybe when you were like 20 and in college, like you love doing Sudoku puzzles. When's the last time you solved a Sudoku? Yeah, go, exactly. go do that. Like maybe keep a Sudoku book like on your desk. And hey, before I start my day, I solve one of those and then I go into starting my work day kind of a thing. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other, like, uh, kind of mindset shift is the whole, like, I don't want to be selfish. Well, I think self-care is That's selfish, right? Like, it, yeah, it, it's self-care. I think it's supposed to be selfish. It's taking care of yourself. Um, and so one of the things, like, you've heard probably the, um, the metaphor of, they liken self-care to like being on an airplane and the oxygen mask come down and it's like, oh, well put yours on so that you can assist other people. Right. And like, that's kind of where we base like self-care. Like I've got to do stuff so I can take care of all of these people in my life that are demanding things. Well, if we look at it a little bit differently, you need to put that oxygen mask on because you need to breathe. Mm. period like and it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else that's on that plane you need oxygen so your self-care is selfish but what we have to do is we have to let go of the guilt of you know utilizing our time and our resources and our energy to do the things that we need to have done to take care of ourselves like and yeah. it's just like yeah and you know so it's like all of that like mindset work and like you know, reconnect with the things that they like, the things that actually that they're wired to enjoy, and then mm. seeing how do we incorporate those things into your business? How do we incorporate those things into your life so that you're enjoying those things on a regular, consistent basis? And it's just like, oh, like, I feel great. Instead of, you know, every day, like, oh my God, like, life kind of sucks right now. I'm so tired. I'm so this. And then you feel guilty because I suck at self-care. Mm. Yeah, I told that totally resonates with me because you know I, I think one of sometimes my biggest non self care act you know is when I'm forcing myself to potentially be doing something that someone else told me to do or uh, or I look up to potentially at some point and they're like no this is the only way to grow a coaching business and you're like oh okay uh, and then you do some of the things that feel disingenuous you know that might have been genuine to other people like you know it's not a judgment to their strategy, but sometimes mm -hmm. that doesn't work for you. You know, like there's so many hacks and tactics out there, but I think you're so right. Like we need to take that necessary pause to really think about like, I can still do good work and still actually do deep work that I share in the world, but how I approach that work or, you know, how I let my own personality shine or even what kind of platforms I'm allowing myself to share my voice could either deplete me <laughs> because it's just yeah. not my kind of platform. Like Facebook does that for me where the minute I get on, I'm like, oh, why did I get here? And so <laughs> when I force myself to be on Facebook all the time, I'm like, I'm feeling a disconnection with my values because I myself in my own personal time don't check Facebook. But then if I'm saying, oh, I'll, you can only get the social media stuff or screw the cubicle on Facebook and I'm forcing my audience to get on there, 
that doesn't feel right. Yep. You know, uh, and, and if I do more, you know, articles where writing is, gives me sort of a hernia at times, cause you know, it takes me three times as long to write an article versus doing a video or something like this, which is like so fun for me. Like to me, I'm like, I could talk forever on an interview yeah. like this and doing more of these activities just makes me, as you said, feel more lit up, right? Feels more in my zone of genius. And then things don't feel as forced, I think as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like Navisa, let's walk through like, what are some of the things that you sort of start with when you work with a business owner and maybe they come to you and they're like, oh my God, I just feel like there's all these to do things on my list every day. My email is like getting out of control. You know, yeah. I feel like I can't, you know, it's that, it's that feeling of like, can never get on top of things. <laughs> And so you go to bed just like angsty and panicked for the next day and just nothing ever feels complete. And they come to someone like you and they go, help me bring more ease and joy into my business. Like what kind of questions do you start asking? Like what kind of considerations would you start with in order to, first of all, get really clear, right? On what the hell's going on <laughs> in this person's life. And then how do you make, or I shouldn't say make them, but how do you encourage them to make the right changes in their business? Uh, and how do they sort of maintain a new sort of identity in a way in their work um, when bad habits can be sort of easily sort of coming back up again? Walk me through the process of how you would sort of prepare your client for the work that you do with them. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, it really kind of starts off, um, I kind of call it like operational like rehab, where <laughs> we, <laughs> We, we have a conversation, you know, it, it really is like, you know, having like, you know, like your best friend sitting there and it's just like, tell me everything. Tell me what's keeping you up at night. Tell me where the headaches are. Tell me what's frustrating you. Tell me what's like got you on the brink of like tears when you're thinking about like, just tell me. And you know, they just kind of go through like this massive brain dump of like, I hate this. If I never had to do this again, I would be happy. You know, I can't stand this. This isn't going right. I don't think I know what I'm doing in this area. Um, this isn't working. You know, so they, they just tell me all of your problems. And I just sit and I just listen and I'll ask questions, you know, based on like what it is that they're asking. But the first step really is I want them to just get out all of their frustrations because one, I want them to know they're talking to someone who gets it, right? Like I have walked in your shoes and, you know, have experienced the exact same things that you have as well. So you're not just talking to somebody just for the sake of venting. You're talking to someone that understands everything that, that you're saying and everything that you're going through. And I've got, the great thing is like, I've got solutions for you. So it's like, the more like you are just like overwhelmed and like, this is like so shitty right now. I'm like, yes, great. Like we have so much work to do and it's going to be great. And they end up looking at me like, you're crazy. And I'm like, no, I'm like, you know, you feeling this kind of way, like it's normal. And like, now that we know all the crap that's on the table, we can sort through this stuff and actually come up with a plan. So that really is like the first step of like doing a brain dump and letting them kind of get it all out. And then with my process, like I have kind of like a core, like eight things that I kind of look at, like from an operational standpoint, like from a foundation, like I think that every business should have this and this and this. And like we go through those things and I help them identify the gaps. So after they kind of get everything out, I take them through an audit process mm. of their business. Like, where are you at right now? Like, tell me like the good, the bad and the ugly, like tell me how you're doing this so that I can see like where the pieces are missing or things need to be tweaked so I can show you how we can streamline this or, you know, how we can get this off of your plate. So we do an audit kind of a, um, of a, of an assessment through their operations and I give them a gap analysis. Like, all right, based on all the things that you told me, based on us walking through what you're doing in the business currently and like really where you want it to be here, here are the things we need to focus on. And you know, they, they might come to me because it's just like, they're like, I need to hire an assistant. And it's just like, okay. And they feel like so frazzled. They just think that the, their next step is like, they need to hire like this other body to help them with something. And it's like, that might be a, a good next step for you. But if you had an assistant in front of you right now, would you even know what to tell them what to do? <laughs> totally. Or would you even know how to tell them what to do? And usually the answer is no. And I'm like, then that's probably not your next best step for you to take in the business. Though it probably is something we need to 
take on like further down. But you know, we go through that brain dump, we would go through the audit process, and then you know, they they might be thinking like, I need to focus on this. But as we're looking at things like holistically, it's just like that's a problem. But it might be like priority number like four or five on the list because there are these other things that you haven't even thought of that we need to address and maybe automate or you know get a tool that can actually do this so that you're not actually taking the time out of your day to do these tasks mm. and it's like you know um because we all fall victim to that i don't know what i don't know so it's like you know you might not know that there's something out there that you could utilize that is going to actually do this for you in an automated way like mm. what like i've been spending like 10 hours a week doing this like but well, you don't have to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you also don't have to hire somebody to do this thing we set this up for you to run the way you want it to run and this will maintain this for you going forward mm. and you're saving yourself like hiring a va that you wouldn't know what to tell them to do in the first place so you know it's kind of walking them through that helping them see the gaps prioritize the things we need to work on and it's like all right here's now your blueprint um for the things that we need to do and then we also talk about like those love languages and how those play into um you know the the different things in their business and how can we leave those things in um to actually like when you're doing these processes they like make you happy instead of you like then coming into your office like i'm dreading doing this thing that i need to do to run my business yeah i love that now i'm just just taking a bit of notes as you talk about that because i think that's going to yeah. be such a big uh like great checklist for people like especially if they were to do this for themselves to start with right it's even just a great exer mini exercise right that people can start doing and i've even already like spinning my own wheels of going yep i need to take a little bit of an audit myself it's almost like a yeah. little bit of a checkup to go let's just spit, put our finger on the pulse about what's really going on and then um allow myself to see the truth of what's happening because if I don't get honest, I think, about what's really taking up my time and energy and what sort of tasks are depleting me versus lighting me up, you're never really going to know the data, right, that can be fixed. You're just going to go, oh, I'm exhausted and I don't know what to do about it. When actually yeah. there is so much you can do about it when you actually almost like open the hood up a little bit and look under the car for a little bit, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Just, just give it, and, and no judgment, right? I think that's a really important piece to do. It's like, don't judge yourself for screwing it up or not doing it right or not knowing a tool. Because I think that, especially with someone like me, where like shame just does not do well with me. Like I immediately start to like mat be a masochist <laughs> and, you yeah. know, whip myself into, into uh, submission by like, how did you screw up on that? And I think for high achievers, shame is not a, a, a good card that's really productive yeah. to, to play. Now, I just want to run through these points that you said and just uh, let mm -hmm. me know if there's anything you want to add to this that might enhance people's um, checklist of doing this for yourself. So you started with like just allowing yourself to talk it out right? And get honest about it, what you call the brain dump about yep. sort of like what's bothering you. Just let your emotions run high. It's okay. It's like talking to your best friend and maybe you might find it easy to journal about it, maybe record it on an audio or something and hear it out again. Um, I'm better at that than writing. Right. And sort of just like get honest about what's not working and what feels overwhelming. Yep. And then you said the second step is to then do an audit of your business, what you call the good, bad, and the ugly. And now for this piece of the step, do you, do you suggest, for example, people just like kind of list out the core things that sort of they spend their time doing in their business? Or do you sort of like um, go deeper into like, okay, if I'm spending my time publishing blogs all day and like I, there might be like 18 steps to publish a, bo a blog. I think so many people like forget that there, it's not a, it's not a 30 minute job. And then they, right. they, they underestimate in their calendar what it takes to do this. And then they sort of churn out a bunch of blog content and go, oh my God, and all I'm doing is just blogs constantly, right? And that doesn't feel right. Do you suggest for them to actually like kind of map out like, wh what do you really do in micro tasks to get that job done? Yeah. So we, yeah, we look at like the big picture first. Like I want to see like holistic, like all of the things that you do, like paint the big picture for me. And then we start looking at like the little details and it's just like, okay, like, well, this sounds like this is like running really smoothly. This seems a little muddy. So let's talk mm. about it more and let's get into the details. And that's where we kind of find like, you don't actually have a clear plan for like how this right. should be running. 
And this is why this is causing you so much angst in your business. Mm. That definitely is something we need to map out. And not only do we need to map out, this is probably one of those things that you as the business owner, like the revenue maker, shouldn't be doing. So then as mapping that out, let's create an SOP that goes along with it and then find somebody that has the skill set to take that away from you, right? So it's like, you know, using even then delegation as a form of self-care to clear my plate and like, you know, not have me doing the things that are like just draining and sucking like the literal life out of me. (laughs) Yep. I totally get that one. And I know like, even for me, like one of the main master content pieces that I love doing, for example, is video. But when Mm -hmm. I was to map, if I was to map out like exactly what it takes for me to like finish filming something like this to the editing process, to the coming up with the content for the blog, to the publishing it on YouTube and the 18 different steps to optimize that video, you know, and then later to share it on social media, share it in my newsletter, share it at all these places. All of a sudden I can really pinpoint the only part I kind of like doing is is this video part. And then maybe the initial like copy of like a social post or an email that sort of sells why people should watch this. Like that's sort of it. (laughs) I don't want to do any keyword research, any like making sure the cards are on the YouTube better and what end card is there and what links we should put where. Like that is like, I could do it, but it brings me like no joy. No joy. (laughs) (laughs) And it might be a good thing to invest in in, in someone to, to delegate that. Okay. So after the audit, then I love this part, which is this prioritization, which I think sometimes uh, I know I'm someone who is a high achiever can kind of like take on to more than I can chew because Mm -hmm. I have a, I could have a story behind my success that it's like, the more I do, the more I'll get seen, the more customers I'll get. And, you know, I think that's something to reevaluate sometimes that you didn't even realize that you've been doing too much. (laughs) paper, right? Like, does that kind of happen to one of your... your Oh yeah, it really does. Like, you know, I, I will have clients that, you know, are super ambitious and we'll talk and it's like, you know, like they have these like amazing ideas that they want to do with the business. And I want to start a newsletter and I'm going to do a blog and I'm going to do a podcast and then I'm going to do a book pitch. And it's like, great. Like, so tell me, you know, when you're kind of anticipating doing all these things. And it's like, well, I want to do it yesterday. And it's like, no, <laughs> you know, no, somebody has to be the voice of reason here. We can, in fact, do mm. all of those things on your list. We cannot do them yesterday. Like, it's, that's just not realistic. And we need to look at, you know, based on, like, what kind of real time do you have to invest in doing this? What resources do you already have that we can utilize, like, help you, like, do this? And, like, all right, what's, like, the thing that we can, like, knock out the park, like, right now and, like, get this done and moving in, like, in maintenance mode? And then you can, like, put your focus on something else. And then, like, what's the next thing that you can tackle? And actually, like, assigning realistic time frames, those kind of, you know, things to yeah. all the things that they want to get done. And it's just, like, here's a plan, like this thing, all these things that you wanted to do, like right now, this is really going to probably take us like nine months to do it. But like, if we break it down, it's like these little like bite-sized things. It's like, this will get done. And then maybe we can hire a VA to like maintain this. And like, you're like done with it. Like that part of your vision has come to fruition and it's happening. And now you can move on to the next thing and we can you know, execute this with excellence and then we can move on to the next thing. And then that way you are not like drowning and really like your own ambition and yeah. then like feeling like I haven't gotten anything done. Well, it's because you are spreading yourself out mm. so thinly, like you're not making traction anywhere. Exactly. You're, you're getting, you think you're getting 10 things done, but you're actually getting 20% of 10 things done <laughs> when you should have probably just picked three and didn't, didn't yes. do that really well. I think there's like, I've been really like, I don't know if you've ever read the book called Essentialism by Greg McCowan. No. One of my favorite books of 2019. I'm like, wait, what year is this? We're like almost getting into 2020. I'm mixing yeah. my years up. But Essentialism, amazing book, which is sort of like allowing you to really think about what matters most, right? In your work, in your business and do, the, do less better, right? I love yeah. that, right? Which is so, such a simple concept, but because we are in such a sort of fast moving, chaotic, hectic kind of world we live in, like there's not, like we don't hear that message that often because as you said, right? It's a badge of honor to feel busy. And I think yeah. when you are, if you care about sustainability, 
you care about not falling out of love with your business. You care about not going back to a job just because you could make it work in your business. You've got to prioritize the feeling of balance in your, in your business. Right. And, and, and I think for me, it's always about timing as well. Like there's times where if I'm writing my book, no, I can't launch a podcast. It's just not going to have my full attention. And it's okay to like, I have a wall called the parking lot which is where I park my ideas that are not wasted. It's just not for now. <laughs> like maybe yeah. a season or, 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 you know, a timing could be better for that. And I think that's kind of a good way to look at it. Uh, okay, great. So prioritize what's important in your task. If you don't know how to do it, hire, hire LaVista to figure that out for you, who isn't emotionally attached <laughs> to yeah. your version of success and can really like someone with reason, as you said, right? A ground of reason to tell you what's what. Um, and then you talked about streamlining your process. So after you prioritize what's important, then you can start looking at doing that better, right? Which is really great. Uh, and that could be delegation you mentioned, right? It could be a tool to automate certain things that I think for coaches, like especially in service-based businesses, we might tend to think, no, I can't, I can't, like I have to be available all the time <laughs> to my customers. And, not, and yes, there, there are some aspects of, service-based business that, hey, automating would not work or it doesn't feel genuine and authentic, but there's other ways of like marketing or operations or even how reminders get sent to your clients, you know, that can be, can be um, streamlined and automated so that you can spend your time doing what you care about the most, which is coaching yes. or whatever it is that your gifts are, right? Which Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. And then lastly, you talked about incorporating more of your love language. And I'll, I'll put the link uh, as well for whoever's watching this in the video blog post for the love languages quiz and test. Mm -hmm. um, I love that quiz. I think it's such yes. a great tool to use to, first of all, tell other people and make healthy requests about how you need support and love, but also mm -hmm. recognize in your team and your spouse and your children what their love language is so that you can serve their needs in the way that resonates with them. Uh, but as a business owner, we'll put the quiz on there as well, because I think that can help you to, when you're working with a VA, working with a partner, working with an assistant, you can also voice out, here's how I like to receive support, right? Here's how I would like to receive love. And how can you, as an important bit that you mentioned, how can you give that love to yourself through maybe saying no to things and saying a hell yes to certain things and saying hell no to certain things. And that's also a love language, isn't it, to yourself? Absolutely. It is like putting those boundaries. Boundaries are so important. Like they really are like a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And, and I think that, you know, really utilizing like your love languages, I think helps to you to build those um, within your business. Yeah, lovely. Okay, well, thank you so very much for giving us such a deep dive into what self-care really means in a business and some really good practical tips about like what businesses can do that is beyond the bubble baths and the champagne <laughs> of self-care and actually stuff that really affects your day-to-day -day pleasure, right? And mm -hmm. how, as you said, it doesn't have to be a thing on the list. It's an approach, it's a mindset, it's a feeling, right? Mm -hmm. About how you run your business that's either gonna run you down uh, or drive you up and light you up, right? Which is really cool. Now, for anyone who is watching uh, La Vista that's sort of interested to like, okay, let me try this new self-care thing. I want to know if this like helps me, you know, still maintain my ambition or is it going to make me into some, you know, little Play-Doh of, you know, woo-woo? <laughs> like, how do I really like make this happen in my work? Like, I know you have something coming up that you told me about that could really help people implement, like put theory to practice in their business that I think they can just see for themselves how things feel after doing that. Uh, what is this new thing that people can join you on? Yeah, so it's coming out in November. And so it's going to be a self-care challenge. It's actually called Priority Me. Um, and it gives you some very practical steps um, that you can really like, you know, take into account and see like how does how does this like feel for me like you know kind of put it on see how does it feel and see if like those are things that you could kind of take on on a more consistent basis to actually implement and infuse into the way that you are running your life in your business that will help you you know charge your batteries and take care of yourself so it's a quickie you know kind of challenge it's five days um so there's like a ritual that actually ties to each of those five love languages that's part of that assessment that dr uh, Gary Chapman put together. Um, but yeah, that, that's rolling out in November and would love for um, anybody to give it, uh, give it a chance and yeah, just kind totally. of see how it works for, you know, for them. 
And we'll also put the link up, uh, which you'll see after we edit this video, right on the screen here, so you can join La Vista. And then we'll share all her social links and website links so you can find out more about what she does and hopefully um, you know, put more of that self-care and self-love into the way that you run your business today. Thank you for having me, Lydia. I really appreciate it. Have you been desiring to create a life and career that gives you the freedom that you deserve, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, let me be the guide to help you quit that job that's crushing your soul, discover your strengths, and make money doing something that you love and will care about. Head over to screwthecubicle.com to find tools and resources I've created just for you to help you jumpstart your escape plan from your nine to five and launch a business you can run from anywhere.